It's a great day at Exodus, and I'm truly excited about the will of God and the hand of God, amen, being upon our life, upon our ministry, upon you all that's even watching on today. I'm so excited about the move of God and about the blessings of God on how God has been blessing our ministry in such an amazing way. To, it's just indescribable, and I'm so excited about how God has been blessing us on every side. I want to dive into a few things today. I want to talk about spiritual gifts. I want to talk about spiritual gifts. Why do you want to talk about spiritual gifts on today? I want to talk about it because on July the 6th, July the 6th, man, I will be here in person at our church, and I'll be holding down a class um, the topic and, and, and what will be going on, the making of a disciple, the making of a disciple. How I still be coming on right here. I still be coming on to the glory of God that where I'll be doing Bible study. But those that want to come in person, man, you can sign up. I said, yes, you can sign up and be with us in person at 630 because I'm going to be doing a class man that's going to be so powerful that's entitled the making of a disciple the making of a disciple and it's going to be so powerful and i just want to start discipling the people of god i mean i want to just start building and pushing amen the people of god and so i'm so excited man uh, we had a couple of weeks man we had a a lot of guys and that turned their life over to jesus and man they gave their life over to the lord and i tell you it was just so amazing they got saved on that Sunday and man the aisles was filled I tell you the aisles was filled and it was just so powerful and one of our members came and she was like pastor listen we got to have class we got to do this and and I just looked at it and I heard her cry I heard her son cry man which was so powerful and I said man I'm gonna do something about it and so I tell you two weeks from now on July the 6th we're gonna have making of a disciple the making of a disciple class it's gonna be powerful it's gonna be so awesome i tell you i've been working so hard with it having so much help man it's just gonna be awesome so i tell you i love to see you at 6 30. we still will be doing bible study virtual but man in person we're gonna be doing the making of a disciple and that's why i want to jump into spiritual gifts i want to talk about spiritual gifts on today and i want you to begin to receive this for the next few weeks as i talk about spiritual gifts i was wanting to go into bible study but man talking about the study of bible but i'm gonna be doing that in the making of a disciple talking about those things there so it's going to be powerful to the glory of god but i want you to jump with me amen to the glory of god in the book of corinthians first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 because i really want to dive into this i want to talk about the observation concerning spiritual gifts the observation um of concerning spiritual gift and i just believe that it's a powerful thing that many of us need to know what our gifts and what god has called us to do you know talk about spiritual gifts in the bible to the glory of god and i just believe that it's going to be so powerful as we talk about it and one of the things that i think that is very powerful very prophetic is as as when we talk about spiritual gifts we need to first realize that they are given to believers spiritual gifts are given to us for the edification of the body of christ spiritual gifts are given to believers they're given to us to the edification of the body of christ watch this and the church man and so it's so important with these spiritual gifts that as god he's given them to us he's given them to spiritual believers he's given these gifts to us to the church to the glory of god so that man that that people can see his good works and mighty works through us to the glory of god and so man it's that scripture in john that i'm gonna get there that what he talks about that greater work shall thou do greater work shall we do because now he going to the father I just totally don't believe that these gifts went with the apostle, apostle because God wouldn't have said that scripture, that greater work shall thou do because now he going to the Father. And so I just believe everything that what Christ did, if he lives in us, 
we can do it as well to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. I know that overseas, like in Africa and different things, man, and, and being in those crusade, crusades, so many miracles take place. So many things take place. Why? Because they believe God. They travel near and far. Man, they believe God and they need miracles. They need healing. Yes, in the USA, miracles take place. But a lot of us, we believe in the doctors. We believe in what the science said. We believe in those different things. And there's nothing wrong with that because Luke was a physician. There's nothing wrong with that. God created the scientists. He created them. And so it's nothing wrong with those things that I push very hard, man. Get the um, shot. Amen to the glory of God. The COVID-19 shot. Man, get vaccinated. Me, my family, my wife, man, we all, my daughters, man, man, we got vaccinated to the glory of God. We got our boosters to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ because God created the doctors. He created the science. He created those things to the glory of God. And so in the USA, miracles still do take place as well. You believe God. Man, I don't see miracles take place. I don't saw healings take place. God has used me in a few times where people was literally dead and the spirit of the Lord God came through me and used me. And as I prayed for them, the prayer of faith, man, God raised them up to the glory of God. My oldest daughter has a miracle. You know, I saw as a baby child that the specialist, the doctor had diagnosed, hey, she got a hole in her ear. She, she's not going to be able to hear. And we prayed and believed God and the gift of healing would took place and God gave her a miracle and she can hear everything that moved to the glory of God. Went back to the doctor and said, hey, we don't see that whole shit. Hey, we know what we saw on Monday, but man, on Tuesday, when we came back that Wednesday to the glory of God, we don't see it no more. And so miracles do take place. And I can give you so many miracles. The doctor told me that I had two months and seven months to live. Amen. Because I had meningitis on the brain. But man, look at God. It's blessed me. I'm 40 years old to the glory of God. And so it's so many miracles I can talk about and begin to declare and say that when I was a baby inside of that incubator, they told my mother that, but man, I'm 40 years old and God has blessed me along the way to the glory of God. And so it's some things I just want to talk about that how God, yes, he did give us these spiritual gifts for the edification of the body of Christ and to the church. And, and you'll see this right here. Watch this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number seven. The Bible says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Did you see that in the word of the Lord? God has given us these gifts. Man, the same God, he declares, he's the same God as yesterday, today, and forever. If you believe God, God will manifest these things. If you believe God, that same spirit, man, that was in Jesus working these miracles, it lives in you to the glory of God. And I tell you, God is just good all by himself. I remember being young, I would see Benny Hinn, Pastor Benny Hinn, praying for people. And I'm just going to be straight up with you. I'm going to be honest to you. I was young, we used to mimic it and, and say, fight on you. And man, we give you glory. Man, we used to all that be playing and falling and all the above. And I was like, man, this stuff here fake, it ain't real. Glory to God. And I was younger, but I'll never forget going to one of his conference. I would never forget this as long as I live. Because I used to all watch him. He waved his hand and people fall. I said, oh man, that's crazy. Man, that is a hex. Man, that's foolishness right there. I'll never forget going to one of his conference and I was standing there and it was so amazing how that man, he worshiped God for hours. Man, we worshiped God and we cried out unto the Lord. We worshiped the Lord, man. And it was just so amazing. Only thing he asked was, he said, if God has healed you, come up to the stage. He didn't lay hands and do all those things. He just said, if God has healed you, he said, come up and give your testimony. And in the worship, people was getting healed. In the worship, people was getting delivered. People have the wrong concept and mindset of saying that, oh, he's this, he's that. He just asked, if God has healed you, come up. And I'll never forget being at that meeting and seeing so many miracles. Man, people was crippled. People was walking. Different things. People were saying that while we was worshiping God and giving God glory, man, they felt the warmth. They felt the healing. But this is what touched me more than anything. I was like, oh, okay, I got all that. But this is what touched me. Because now we're younger, he would wave his hand through the crowd and people fall. And I wanted to know, was God really real like that? I'll never forget 
He said that he's about the wave. He was talking about that wave in his hand. And man, I would never forget, I was standing up in that crowd. And man, I was standing up in the balconies and in that crowd. And I was sitting there. And man, I never forget when he waved his hand, man. There was such a strong power, such an anointing. I'm not saying it's the man, but it's God. It's the anointing, man. He has a five-hour prayer life to the glory of God. And man, and this and that worship as him waving his hand. And y'all, you got to know me. You, you had to know me, glory to God. And I was standing like, I ain't falling. I ain't doing none of this right here. And the presence of God. And he just was nice and just said, he said, God, and we give you glory, God. And he waved his hand. And the anointing of God was so heavy in the room. Man, I never get falling. And I said from that day, I asked God to forgive me. I said, Lord, please forgive me for mimicking. Please forgive me for thinking this a hex and fake. And some people, you just need your own experience with God and your own experience. And then you'll begin to realize like, man, these gifts are still here to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. When he pray for individuals and pray for people, they have already claimed their healing. They have already believed God for their healing. And he just go and he just pray for them. And so I do believe that God has given him that gift of healing to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. It's something in Ephesians that I think that's such a blessing as well. Ephesians chapter four, because we're talking about the gifts of, uh, are being given to the believers and for the edification for the body of Christ and the church. We're talking about that. And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12 says this right here. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes, God has given us these spiritual gifts to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, what you mean by that? I, I just believe that the Holy Spirit bestows these gifts to whomever he will. It's God that gives us these gifts. It's God that gives us these spiritual gifts. He said in even one scriptures that be blowing my mind and we're going to go to Romans chapter 12 verses 6 through 8. I want to show you a few of these gifts because it's the Holy Spirit that bestows these gifts to whomever he will. He says in one scripture that gifts and callings are out repentance. Man, a lot of people have gifts. A lot of people have these gifts. It just depends on who have your gift. Who has your gift? Who has your gift? to the glory of God. Do Christ have it? I do. Uh, have you given your gift to the world? And you can see those different things. Do you sing gospel? Or do you sing secular? It's things like that. A lot of psychics. Psychics have a prophetic gift, but who has their gift? It's things like that. Who has your gift? That's the question that asks you. It's so powerful that we're going to be doing a, a, a powerful workshop from October to um, December in our ministry that's going to be so prophetic that it's going to be going forth on um, Star and that you can start signing up on August the 19th. August the 19th, we're going to have a huge worship night here at our church and you can start signing up that day that what we're going to do this huge workshop from October to December entitled, Who Has Your Gift? And so I think that's going to be a powerful thing, but it's the Holy Spirit that gives these gifts to whoever he will. He gives these gifts. Well, he says in verse number 11, um, in verse number 11 of Corinthians, but let me read to you Corinthians real quick. Corinthians um, chapter number 12 and verse number 11. Watch what he said. He says, but all these work of that one and the self-same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. You said it's God that gives you these gifts. He give it to whoever he will. He give these gifts to whoever he want to give it to. And I just believe this, that no one believer is besought at all the gifts. No one person has all the gifts. No one person has all the gifts. Man, that's why the body of Christ is so important for us to come together because some people teach different than others. Some people preach different than others. You just got to know your assignment to the glory of God. And that's what I love about God. I love great teaching and preaching to the glory of God. Man, the gift that God has blessed Bishop Jakes that, man, I think he's one of the greatest storytellers ever. Man, when he talked, he cultivated the whole room, man. It's just one of those gifts that what God has blessed him and given him. We all not going to preach alike. 
we going to have be used by God alike, but we're going to preach different. I wish you, um, Pastor Joel Osteen, he know his realm. He know what God has called him to. He know what God has assigned him to do. He might not preach like his dad. His daddy was an amazing preacher. He was an outstanding preacher. I tell you the truth. I love hearing some of his dad old takes. Uh, Pastor John Osteen, how he preached the word preached the word of the Lord. But I love how Pastor Joel Osteen preached to the glory of God. Man, same thing. He asked you who want to be saved. He preached the word of God. I know some people, oh, he don't know. He preached all the above, glory. But he know his assignment to the glory. Bishop Jakes know his assignment. Man, Pastor Victor Reddish, I know my assignment. Pastor um, Tom, Pastor Tom Misa know his assignment. These different pastors, they, they know their assignment. And that's one of the biggest things that that's why we all are the body of Christ. I don't have time to be arguing who preached this and he do this. Do they are they homiletically sound? Are they hermeneutically sound? Are they preaching theology? This and that. I don't have time for all of the argument. I only have time as long as they preaching the death, burial, resurrection. They preaching Jesus Christ. They're doing the very best to their ability. As long as they ain't preaching heresies and preaching all this crazy stuff and foolishness and all this other crazy things. Look at here. If something is preached crazy and it, it don't sound like right, look at. I know how to get up and walk out. We argue too much. We got the Baptists fighting with the Presbyterian and the Presbyterian fighting with the Luther, Lutheran and the Methodist fighting with my God, the, 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 the Church of God Christ. All of this stuff is just ludicrous. Let's preach the gospel, teach the word of God, and let God use you according to the gift that what he has given you. Because no one believer is bestowed all the gifts. It, 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 it's a lot of people preach explanatory preaching. Some people preach context. It, it, it's so many different things on what, how people preach and how they minister to the glory of God. You got to find your own niche to the glory of God. I love expository preaching, but I, I, I love, I go through seasons that where I like to preach. I'm a good storyteller as well. I love to tell stories. I'm an illustration preacher. I like to preach illustration like Jesus. He preached parables. Glory to God. He preached 40 of them things, you know, to the glory of 40, 43 of them things. He preached parables, illustrations. That's how I like preaching illustrations to the glory of God. I'm big on testimony and preaching to the glory of God. And so you got to find out how God used you. What gift has God has given you so that you can flow in this thing. So let me show it to you that how God has been given one believer all the gifts. In verse 14, he says something. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. He says, for the body is not one member, but many. Did you see that right there? For the body is not one member, but many. I have not given one person all the gifts. And everybody don't have the same gift. Everybody have different gifts. You can go get 20 musicians in the room and all of them, you can tell them to play this one song. You can tell them to play Glory to God. Um, 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 you can tell them to play, um, I, uh, what the song, Jesus Love Me, Yes I Know. All of them will play it different. Same gift, all of them have a gift, but all of them will play it different. You can get 20 preachers in a room and tell them to preach from the book of Corinthians, chapter number 12, verse number 1, and we all will say something different. Because all of us are different. Now, I don't know why we fight. Oh, we talk about this. Some people, God has given a prosperity anointing. That way they can preach and teach the word of God. Like David Ramsey, man, can help you get out of debt. Teach the word of God. Man, um, John Mikeswell can build you as being a leader. While we're fighting about all of this, man, it, it's so crazy. It's in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible God wants you to be broke. It's nowhere in the text. Why would God say, I wish above all things that my people shall prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper? Why did he say, I have given unto you power to get what? Well, why would he say that the wicked is laid up for the just? Why would he say all these things like that if he wants you to be broke? Come on, just everybody has different gifts. Everybody has strong anointing. These people can help you get out of debt. I don't know one Christian in this world where if it's you, I'm sorry, please forgive. But I know as a Christian, I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be a broke preacher. Who's going to follow? 
I wouldn't follow a broke preacher. Let me say that right there. And I don't, it was nothing broke about Jesus. It was nothing broke about Jesus. It was nothing broke. I don't care how you want. You can feel how you want. He left a rich heaven and came to this earth. Look, it wasn't nothing broke about Jesus. Glory to God. It wasn't nothing broke about him. It ain't nothing broke about my Savior. I don't think that God will have you to live and uh, uh, go to a rich heaven and be broke on it. I just don't know. I, 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 I wish above all things that my people shall prosper. Prosper mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Glory to God. If you don't have no finance, how are you going to build a kingdom? The Bible says, even in Ecclesiastes, he said, money answer of all things. So it, you got to have just about, he said, for the love of money. If you love greed, for the love of money is the root of all it. So people, you, you just got to be, you got to find your niche. And then when you find your niche, when you find your calling, maximize it. Maximize it. Maximize it. I, you maximize it and you, and you do it to the fullest. And, of course, people going to talk about you. That's why Paul, when he wrote all these letters, he wrote them to the church. To the church. And so it, I know some people want preachers to be broke. They want this and that. They want these different things right here. But it's, it's ludicrous. It's crazy to the glory of God. Nobody ain't talking about Jay-Z how rich he is and P. did it. Beyonce, nobody ain't talking about them. All these NFL players, they ain't praying for you. They ain't interceding for you. They ain't crying out for you. Look here, you going to football games, paying tickets and, 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 and investing in their life entertainment or whatever you like doing you investing in helping somebody else when you go to walmart you make your walmart richer when you go to publish you make public so you don't think that, that's something's just common sense every iphone you buy you happen to apple every ipad you buy you helping apple every Samsung you buy you you invest in them so why can't you invest into the kingdom of god and why can't god bless you to be prosperous why can't your man or woman of god be prosperous but so it's just things like that you just think about when we're talking about, I'm talking about spiritual gifts, and God gives you a gift. Man, it's for you to be multiplied so that you can help build the kingdom of God. I don't want to be rich for me. I want to be rich because I want to do more for the kingdom of God. What's your motive behind it? Every gift God has given me, I want it to go to the next level so that it can help build the kingdom of God. To the glory of God. I want my daughters to be blessed. I want my family to be blessed. I want my wife to be blessed. I want things, uh, man, I, I want it to be blessed, man. I want them to see things around the world to the glory of God. And so God is giving you a gift, man, so that it can help you, so that, man, you can get to that place. Man, you're a great cook. If you're a great instructor, you're a great marketer, utilize your gift so that it can bless the kingdom of God, so it can build the kingdom of God. And so I just strongly, as I say, no one believer is besought at all the gifts. You just got to find that gift of what God is giving. And that's the fun part. Because once you discover your gift, man, God will give you another gift. He'll give you more gifts. It's just like this, the parable in the story in Matthew that talks about, I believe, chapter 25, if I ain't mistaken, Matthew 20, chapter 25, 26, when they talk about how that one guy had five talents. His master gave him five talents. He came back, he had 10. Another one had two talents. He came back, he had four. And then one person had one gift, man, he buried his gift. Are you burying your gift? Are you burying your gift? Or can God give you a gift and he give you two gifts? So I believe that spiritual gifts is so important to the glory of God. I believe that all of the gifts are important. They all are important. And you can see this right here in chapter 12 of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 22. The Bible says, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Verse 23 and 24 says, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we besorch more abundant honor and our uncommonly parts have more abundance commonliness. Watch this. For our commonly parts have to have no need, but God have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which like. So they all are, they are all important. Every gift, every spiritual gift are important. Ain't no one better than the other. That's why we call the body of Christ, the body of Christ. 
And so uh, one another thing that I think that's so powerful that no one gift is besought to all the believers. We know that, that no one gift is besought to all of the believers. And so we all have different gifts. We all have different talents. We all have different things that where we can edify the body and so that the body of Christ, though, that we can grow and so that we can continue to win souls for Jesus Christ. Let me show you a few of these gifts in, 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 in Romans, Romans chapter number 12 and verse number six and seven. I'm going to read it from out the NLT. Um, I want to describe these gifts. I want to describe these gifts to show you um, prophecy. Um, service, because this in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8, you're going to see prophecy, you're going to see service, you're going to see teaching, you're going to see encouraging or exhortation, you're going to see generosity, which is giving, you're going to see leading, and you're going to see mercy. You're going to see these six gifts in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, and I'm going to stop right there and close today. I'm going to stop and close right there today of Romans chapter number 6, uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. You're going to see these six gift prophecy. You're going to see service, uh, like as for a serving. You're going to see teaching. You're going to see exaltation, or you will see um, encouraging. Um, you're going to see generosity, which is giving. You're going to see leading and mercy to the glory of God. And I tell you, those seven gifts, I'm sorry, not six, but those seven gifts you're going to see, and then we'll close right there to the glory of God. I want to read out the NLT so that you can really get the just and more understanding of that scripture. It says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Did you see that? He said, I have given you certain gifts. I've given you different gifts for doing certain things well. Then he says, so if God has given you the ability to prophesy, right? The, 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 it, it, so if God has given you the ability to prophesy, watch this. He says to us then, he says, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If I had given you the gift of prophecy, what is prophecy? Prophecy is to preach, to proclaim. He even says in the book of Joel, and he says it, in that, and I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and thy sons and daughters shall prophesy. Thy sons and daughters shall prophesy. So if you're going to prophesy, which is preach, he says, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Because you know he already told that he, he said, man, every man has been given what? The measure of faith. Watch this. Watch what he says. Here, keep on reading. It says these words right here. He says, if your gift is serving, there you go, service, serving others. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. Do it with a good heart. Do it with a motive. See, if you're serving, it's not about the people who you're serving. I'm serving. I'm going to do it well, and I'm going to be the best at doing it, and I'm doing it unto the Lord, which brings us one word, consistency. Everything you do, it got to be done unto the Lord. If you prophesy, man, look at here. I know when I preach the gospel, God preach it to me first. That's how I can write it. That's how I can lay it out. That's how I can put the scripture. If God has given you a gift to serve, serve well. Do it for him. You ain't doing it for nobody. If you're doing it for others, you know you're doing it for others because you catch attitudes with them. You catch attitudes with your boss. You catch attitudes, hey amen, for, with your kids and your wife and your spouses and different things. If you're doing it for them, you got to do this for the Lord. Serve it well. Watch what he says right here. So prophetic. Watch what he says right here in this text. This text is powerful. Then he says this right here. Look what he says. Look how he speaks to it. He said, if you are a teacher, teach well. Everybody don't have that gift. Everybody don't have that gift. See, we all have different gifts. Some people can preach. Some people can teach. Some people have the combination where they can teach and preach. Praise be to God. If you're a teacher, that's the next one. Teach well. Watch what he says right here in this text. He says, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Be encouraging. That's like exhortation. Be encouraging. It's one of the members at the church. I love this text. Oh, man, Miss Terry, bless my socks every week. 
Every week she blessed my socks. I, I was so sad I couldn't even see her this week to the glory of God. But she sent the text, he sent the text to one of our other members and said, but every Sunday she encouraged me. Every Sunday, after every sermon, after every service, I'm telling you, man, and she made the best coffee in the land. Oh my God. But she encouraged me every who last week, not this week, this past, but the week probably um, when I was ministering, got finished ministering and she had the coffee on Father, and she said, who, Pastor? She said, that was the best one ever right there. Every Sunday, she's here at church. Man, she encouraged me. She builds me. She pushed me to, to want to, man, do my best for the next week. Because she has that gift of encouragement. Man, and, it, and there's so many people who she encouraged. That, man, God has given her that gift. But every Sunday, man, she encouraged me when she and I was like, man, God has used you, Pastor. What a word this week. Oh, I was so inspired. Oh, I was so blessed. Oh, I needed that, Pastor. So encouraging. If God has given you that gift, man, encourage. Then look what he says right here. He says to us, if it is given, give generously. Some people would give. Man, some people say, I, I'm not gifted with a creativity. I'm not giving to, to, to clean and do this. But boy, I, I can give. I sow into it. And that's that gift. So while we arguing, let's get mad. And, and I'm, let me be the first to raise my hand, preachers. Because some get mad. Man, it's the same people doing the same thing. But man, you never talk about that person. They might not be here cleaning and helping. But boy, they don't get $400, $500, $1,000. That's they, they, hey, I, I might not do it, but here go five thousand. Let me let me sow into it. That's when when we come together with the body of Christ and we understand that everybody give. If God is giving you a gift to giving, give generously. Watch this. If God is giving you leadership ability, if God is giving you leadership ability, take the responsibility serious. Do you see that? Look at this. You saw prophecy. You saw serving, you saw teaching, you saw encouraging, you saw giving, you saw generosity. Now you're saying leading. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Amen. And then the last one, watch this, what he says, in mercy. And if God, and if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Look at those seven gifts that were just shown in the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8. You saw prophecy. You saw serving. You saw teaching. You saw my God encouraging. You saw generosity. You saw leading. And you saw mercy. I'm just going over these gifts with you. Man, I pray that you was blessed on the day. I pray that God's hand was over your life. I pray that, man, your mind was open. Your heart was open to the teaching on today and i tell you i believe that god is going to do some great things in your life man i love for you man to be a part of our ministry by giving you can give to the glory of god so we can continue to build this ministry continue to do the work of the lord i tell you just such a joy and i tell you so many ways that you can give you can look at it on the screen and um uh, look at it as we'll have it um cash out uh it'll be down in the description that way you can see cash app um, dollar sign Exodus Worship. You can see it. You dot, um, uh, download the Givelify app. I tell you and look up Exodus Harvest and it'll be a blessing to us. But we love you so much. Man, may heaven smile upon you. I pray that you was blessed today. I know it was a little bit longer because I'm talking about spiritual gifts, but I want God's hand to be upon your life. And I want you to get that niche. And I want you to discover that gift that what God has given you. Remember July the 6th, July the 6th, man, we'll be here in person where I will be here, man, doing the making of a disciple to the glory of nobody but Jesus Christ. I love you so much. And if you're not saved, man, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Save my soul. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, man, God just saved you. You just came to the family. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts. Then go to the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes. And then from there, let God lead you. I love you so much. Yours truly, Pastor Victor Redditch. And remember, as I say all the time, let the past be the past. 
and let God be God. I love you to life. God bless you.